it would be my second post on how a cold call landed a nine figure government contract. My name's Gavin Tice, and what brought me to GovClose was Hey guys, Ricky here with GovClose, and this week, I'm bringing you a conversation I had with Gavin Tice. Gavin's one of our recently certified GovClose advisors. He's gone through the certification program, all of the training on selling to the government, as well as capturing leads, winning clients, helping companies sell to the government. He's got a fantastic story, and listen to the results that he's getting. So listen to some of the things that have worked for him, some of the things that he's brought out of the program and used, head on over to govclose.com. But right now, let's listen to our conversation with Gavin. First of all, thank you for doing this. You got the BD deal coming in. You brought in a contract. Funny you say that. I've never had this happen. We put in this really challenging opportunity into the DLA. And it's the one I was telling you about, like with certifications, they came back to us and said, hey, do you guys want to refine your response? Whenever the government comes back and starts asking questions about your proposal, then you're headed in the right direction. Yeah, it would be my, it would be my second post on how a cold call landed a nine figure government contract. That's fantastic. What brought you to the GovClose program? Like, why'd you decide to join? Yeah, so my name's Gavin Tice, and what brought me to GovClose was I, I've been a sales coach for many years, and I've always told folks that they need coaching and mentorship because there's a lot of mistakes that, that you can make, and you don't have to make them. There's also a lot of area that if you have the right information, you can streamline your operations and, and make yourself more effective. GovClose came and it was a no-brainer. I, I wanted some uh, secret sauce that you can only read so many books and read so many blog posts. And you sometimes have to pay to really understand like how you can make and be effective in your current role in the government contracting business. So is your background involving government contracting at all? Yes. So I am a, we'll call myself a capture manager uh, for a company currently. I've been in my role for 19 months and I've had some small successes, but building a government pipeline and really getting out there takes a lot of time. As you're famous for saying, it takes about 18 months to get your first win and anything you can do, anything you can learn to streamline and make that faster, like all, all things considered, if I, if this would have been around a year ago, I probably would have signed up a year ago and probably been a lot further in my current role, so. Interesting, okay, so you are, you have a W-2 with a company selling to the government, you're a capture manager, so your job is to build a pipeline, go after, win deals. And how would you say that your perspective on government contracting has changed? So before the course, your perspective was this, and after the course, it's changed, and is it for the better? Good, good question. It's definitely for the better. I, I think when I first came in the role, there's a lot of just things to get on the basic playing field right. Small things, and those small things when I inherited this role hadn't been done before. So I had to go back and revise. And then it was really understanding how to go and, and capture that business properly, which doesn't mean late to the game in an RFP stage and like rolling the dice and hoping you're going to win. Although you can, it's a lot better to get in at those special announcements, those industry days, obviously source to SOG and RFIs to just get some marketing out there and get some conversations. And again, one of your proverbial uh, sayings is meetings matter. Whether you're meeting with contracting officers or PMs or even uniforms, it's all uh, part of the big show. You, if your company doesn't have a, a giant name in the business, you've got to start early and start off. And, yep. You're right. Meet meetings win deals for sure. Have you been able to apply anything that you've learned to your current role as a capture manager? Absolutely. My company's been an interesting predicament. We're, we're really not in the place to prime too much. So understanding how to do really well in deep market research has helped me to go after a lot of primes to subcontract with. And the market research study is an endeavor. It takes a while to really master it. And I probably still haven't mastered it. But what's really important is when I can go and call someone with an opportunity, because that speaks and resonates, they don't get a lot of calls first off. 
And then when I can say, hey, look, I've reviewed all of your past performance. I know you've been in this office and this agency. You guys have done a lot of work with them. Here's an opportunity. I think it's a slam dunk. They don't always work out, but I always get meetings and I always get asked to go ahead and, and continue conversations to find future pipeline opportunities for us. So extremely important if you're just starting out and there's not a lot of opportunity for you to prime, maybe because you lack past performance or really good PPQs, it, it's foundational. So that is hands down like the game changer for me. And then understanding how to go after recompetes was really helpful when you don't have access to all, all the big name tools out there and being able to look at people's contracting cycles and say, oh, look, this is going to come up in a year. I should probably start talking to folks early and uh, find out, hey, are you going to re-release this for recompete? What do you love about your current contractor? Obviously, they're not going to be open enough to tell you about problems, but this is a business based on business intelligence. So yeah. you, you have to be intelligent and understanding what you're going after. Yeah. The data, the research is so important. It's a, it's a game changer too. It's the reason we have kids in their twenties now going out and winning consulting clients, right? To in the federal space, because they know more than some of these companies that have been around for a while, because they're just not doing it. And speaking of which, that's a transition to consulting, right? So you work for a company, but you also have your own. LLC, which I recommend to everybody, especially in this space. So now you're looking at some consulting opportunities. What, where are you, where, what's your focus area and have you had any progress there? Yeah, I'd say my focus area is obviously business development. A lot of folks just don't have the capacity to continue to find new opportunities. And funny enough, there's a lot of companies who really have no idea who they should be targeting. They say, well, it's this branch of the military. When you do the due diligence and you get really down to the brass tacks of things, it could be the DLA. It could be two or three other agencies that their original intent was like not so good. So yeah, I've had a, a couple opportunities right now. Um, I'm working on my second proposal company to do business development in various forms for them and market research. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, you're a shoe in for BD. You're doing it for a company now. And obviously you're doing great things there. And now, so you're working potentially with some other clients now as a consultant. Let's talk about wins. Utilizing what you've I've seen in the program, have you been able to use that to find clients, potential clients, get on the call with people? You talked a little bit about your company. Well, what kind of wins can people expect if they join the program? I think it gives them a, a great foundation to begin with. First and foremost, a lot of people may have like a commercial sales background. This arena is completely different than commercial sales because frankly, in commercial sales, it's all about hope. I hope this company has a need. In the federal government, we know they have a need. We know they've purchased the need before, and now it's time for you to do your due diligence and to actually be able to go in with rock solid data, which is unheard of in the commercial sphere. You can have much more granular, intelligent discussions with companies. You have the ability to prime or subcontract with large primes that if you've got something really great that can offer a strategic win for them, it's huge. So if you don't have that foundation and you're just going out there spraying and praying, like it's not great. Thankfully, I didn't start off that way, but what this took me from for those of you who might be in my role also in business development or as a capture manager, is it's given me an actual roadmap strategically to be able to understand who I really need to talk to, how I need to talk to them. Because let's face it, there's a lot of small businesses out there calling up folks saying, hey, I'm a, I got this certification or that certification. And that's not a win. It's like, great. But at the end of the day, if you're not coming to them with an opportunity, that they can win and that they've got experience doing, like you're going to fall flat on your face I and mean, just waste your time. Yeah. For people watching that may be interested in our certification program, we try to message to people, hey, it's not just a bunch of courses. Could you, there are courses certainly, and they're pretty extensive so they can learn what you've been talking about. But we try to make sure we're working with the students, right? So we have weekly coaching calls, right? We also, there's plenty of interaction between me one-on-one -on -one with the students. Can you talk a little bit about how maybe we've had to interact through the program and 
even with things like proposals, like, hey, you've got a client coming up. Have we helped you with the proposal writing process? What about pricing? Things like that. Just messaging to potential students out there. Hey, you're not just learning a process and it's off on your own. We're also actually helping you build a business on the backside of this. It, it's very important. And early on in this, in my training with your academy, I had a friend come to me who needed a proposal review. And I was out of my depth, number one, it wasn't my, my, my arena. Mm -hmm. And your network is great to be able to leverage, to bring in someone who these folks had like no time and they had to put something together. And, and by being able to meet with Colonel Orndorff, it was game changing for them. They were able to get a solid proposal review that gave them clear points to execute on, to actually win that opportunity. And then with our groups engaging, we're meeting people from across the board. There's so many different places that people are going towards and it's fellowship too. That's another thing. I think in the commercial world, you could do sales training all you want, but unless you're in it with other people and can talk to each other and say, Hey, I'm going through this. What would you do? Or how would you approach this? That's huge. And then of course you're a phone call away. So yeah. it, it's rare that you get that kind of coaching and mentorship. In a lot of sales training, I guess you could say so. Yeah. But so many benefits. It's unreal. No, I mean, I, I think the best, the best way to get results is to work together and to make sure that we're all listening, what's working, what's not working. Uh, could you speak specifically to bringing clients in for your own consulting business? Did you learn anything about the course for, hey, how do I find leads? How do we price consulting offers in government contracting? So for you reaching out and talking with potential clients, what did, what did you learn there? It's, it's very interesting you bring that up. This is the only academy, the only certification out there. So that, that carries a lot of weight. It's not like this course is intense for those of you who are on the fence, you got to understand, like, it's not watching videos and like taking notes. You got work to do, which I think is foundational to actually understanding things and being able to produce it. So when, when I'm talking to folks, we're, we're coming at a very different angle. There's a lot of people out there talking about these strategies or doing these things that might seem really good on paper, but when you're actually showing them real honest truth that's, that's brought in by government data, it really changes your, your expertise in that moment, right? And then pricing, pricing is something everyone's got to be comfortable with. They've got to know their value, but very few people have the, the holistic understanding that we do about the government contracting acquisition process. And someone who's got maybe no experience can then go and call people. And it's the questions they ask, not the answers that they give that's vital. So when folks are talking to me, it's the questions I'm asking that makes them think like, huh. I've talked to other consultants, they've never asked this before, or they've never gone this direction, or they've never offered these kind of things to me. And, and that's what sets you apart from a, a, a lot of the other folks out there. It's really interesting and tight knit community when we're talking about federal contracting. And I think if we're talking about like a skill set that is profitable, first of all, is it a skill set? Do you have a skill set that can generate revenue for somebody? That's one question. And usually in consulting, if it, if there's a direct tie to you being able to increase the profit or the revenue for a company, that is usually a really good sign that you have something that you can sell as far as a consulting service or uh, doing projects as a freelancer. But then it's how many, how much is your competition, right? So like if you're a real estate agent, well, you've got millions and millions of real estate agents out there. You're competing for a set number of uh, leads, right? But for something like this, You've got very few, even the companies that are actually selling to the government have limited to no understanding of what's actually going on. So you have a very unique and small niche of people that can actually speak to government contracting in a way that makes sense and, and understand it and understand how to, to drive results. So you've got something to drive revenue, you don't have competition, and you are easily going to be set your, setting yourself apart from anyone that's just jumping into it, trying to try to start a business here, but that doesn't really understand government contracting. They usually highlight themselves and, and are going to fizzle out because no one's going to work with them. And just having said that about the uniqueness of this space, what would you say? So for people that are on the fence, they're like, yeah, I'm thinking about it, or maybe they don't like the cost. 
what would you say to those people as far as what, why should they join the program? I, I think first and foremost, like I said before, you can make a lot of mistakes and, and those mistakes are very costly over time. If you knew that paying a small fee and really investing in yourself and this coaching and this course was going to streamline your process from 18 months to maybe six months, it, it's a no brainer. I think also it, there's a famous book that says you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. And that's reality. You can't read a book on government contracting and think that you're going to be able to be knowledgeable enough to go and help people drive business. There's plenty of blogs and videos out there, but ultimately they're smart because they're always leaving out a couple key things because they want you to come after them and pay them for those key things that are missing. Yep. So ultimately it's better to get a real foundation. And if you do nothing more with this course than just go get a full-time W2 job, great. Because now you're going to be able in a job interview and they say, well, what do you bring to the table? You do a market research study. Yeah. Hey, look, I looked at your top makes codes. I've looked at all your awards. You guys haven't even been going after these agencies and these offices. And hey, I pulled an ad hoc report. I know all the contracting offices and their emails. But if you hire me, like I've already got a roadmap of how to go after new business, recompetes. And by the way, I've also looked at our top three competitors and I've seen how they do their business. And now we're going to go after all those same offices and start taking market share. Yeah. You're not going to read that in a book. No. A video is not going to do it for you. So it, it's really, if you want a solid foundation and you want to be able to hit the ground running, sometimes you got to pay to play. It's a wise investment for sure. I think that after listening to you talk about business development and what you need to do to actually go in and win some of these uh, contracts, there are probably people out there that might want to hire you to uh, do some business development for them. What type of projects would you be available for when we talk about business development? For the businesses out there that are maybe struggling selling to the government, thinking about just getting started, or maybe they're selling to the government and they just want to improve, win more contracts, what, what are some of the type of things that you could do for them? Yeah, a market research roadmap is fast and by far the most impressive thing I, I can put together. I'm happy to take that to the next level and, and, and go and actually develop relationships and, and help them target properly. I've already come across uh, a friend of mine's company that I did some unpaid consulting for. And he was like, hey, I'm thinking about you talking about the government and it's great and there's trillions of dollars out there. What What's out there for me? I said, okay, let me use this as just some a good exercise. And when I went through his market, it really showed like he, he's got one of two options. He either needs to grow his business for about three years to really get some good commercial standing so he can have that leverage to, to come in with no credibility versus bad credibility, or he should go in at all. And I said, you just saved yourself a lot of headache and, and worry and frustration about diving into this giant beast that's the government. And he, he was just enlightened, you yeah. know, it helped him understand where his company currently is looking at his competitors and seeing the kind of like development that they've had. And they're pretty concrete. He's in a, the cybersecurity world, pin testing said, look, you got, there's opportunity, but right now you're just going to struggle. So I'm yeah. back to the drawing board. He's not going to make a, a, a solid investment because it's human capital, it's resources, it's time. And that takes away from his commercial business. So he, he saved himself probably, I don't know, $100,000 over the next year. Yeah, and, you know. but you're absolutely right. That roadmap is the first place every company should start. Anytime I take on a new client, it doesn't matter if they're a public company, big company, selling, I've been doing it for a while, uh, brand new. We always have to start because almost every company has never done this that I've that I've worked with which is who buys what you sell because they don't look at the data. Who buys what you sell? How do they buy it? And there's a lot of that goes into it, but you're looking at your competitors, now we can reverse engineer exactly what you have to do. So we're not guessing. And that's the benefit of government contracting. So despite the fact that it's hard and that it takes a long time, we can know exactly what you need to do. You don't have to guess. If you guess, you're probably going to fail. If we know what to do and we're focused, 
and we take those steps over time, we can build a very lucrative business. I know you can help them do that. Look, Gavin, thanks for coming on here today, talking a little bit about yourself and about our program. And hey, for anybody out there that's listening and wants to hire Gavin, go to our show notes. You can click on the links there. We're going to give you uh, the ability to schedule a consultation with him directly if you'd like. If you're interested in our certification program, go to govclose.com and just click on you want to become an expert. And then you'll get put with one of our awesome sales guys and they'll tell you a little bit about the program, give you what the syllabus looks like. And we also have some payment options if you're interested. So Gavin, thanks again, man. Yeah, cheers. That's great. Right, take care.